my brothers and sisters around the globe. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Professor John Amoa at Wagema University, Kampala, Uganda, where I'm working as the Quality Assurance Director of this institution. And I've been here for some time and we thank God that today he's using me uh, to introduce his word to people that we cannot reach even when we fly. And so we thank you for joining this um, Global Family Net Conferences that is there for all of us to study the Word of God and to know God the best. We thank you so much for joining us and we want you to be all the time with us so that you are blessed and then we are also blessed. Invite your people uh, to join us. Today my topic is uh, when God is silent. In our lives sometimes God is silent and that is what we feel. And so I want you to subscribe, I want you to like, I want you to share the link of this Global Family channel. Uh, you can find it on the YouTube <clears throat> and on Facebook. That's the Global Family Net Conferences. And share it with others so that they will also join us uh, for us to be able to study the Word of God. Let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for what you have done for us, giving us life and in abundance. This morning we are here to share and to listen to your word. May your holy angels come and touch all of us. May the Spirit of God touch each one of us, touch my mouth, touch my brain cells, and give me what you have prepared to your people so that, so that all of us will be edified and come to you. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. As I told you today, our, our topic is when God is silent. There are so many times when we pray and then we realize that God is not, we are not getting answers. We feel that God is silent. In all walks of life, with ladies, gentlemen, and everyone. And so, at the end of it all today, we shall see whether our God is all the time silent or he's so close. And what he, he, he does for us all the time. And so, I want to tell you a story of a, a plane crash. The pilot's face was plastered. It was only the pilot who was in the plane. It was plastered with blood just after five minutes of the crash. This was an Easter weekend. And people were relaxing on the grass. And a lady called Laura was also part of it. Those who were relaxing on the, on the ground. Only five minutes had passed. When suddenly a churning sound from the sky. And a long horrible screech on the side of a tree. There was a broken fiberglass of body upside down. And guess it, it was a plane that has crashed. Within five minutes of impact, Laura and other people who were there, they reached where the plane was and they realized that it was only the pilot. But it was five minutes late. Why couldn't we save him? That's what they, all those who went there said. Where was God in all this? Sometimes we feel that God is silent. How can we say God was close in this situation? When the plane was coming down, within five minutes, if they had rushed there earlier, they could have... Um, saved the pilot. Some questions seem to find 
no answers and challenge our faith. Our faith are challenged. When questions like this, we cannot answer them. There is a lady known as Mrs. Hanover. This lady, Mrs. Hanover, is a fine Christian lady raised from a Christian um, home. Her husband had no religious background. The husband did not want to go to church at all. This became a fervent prayer for Mrs. Hanover. She has been praying over it and spent years praying for her husband's salvation and believe that one day God would answer her prayers. Do you pray for someone? Do you pray for your siblings who are not Christians? Who are wayward? Do you pray for your children? Do you pray for your aunties? Do you pray for your friends who don't know God? One day her husband left for a business trip and never returned. He was killed instantly on a head head on collusion. His car crashed with somebody's car. And at once the man died. The lady was left to wonder what good her faith had been. Why didn't God save my 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 husband? And as a result, she abandoned her faith. She left the church. Let me ask you, was God close in her situation? There are two situations that can challenge faith. Our faith, two situations can challenge us very, very, very much. The first one, sometimes there appear to be no answer. No answer will come. And when no answer comes, it becomes a, a very challenging situation. Yet we need faith to advance God's agenda. No answer will come. The second one, we are not the first to struggle with weak faith. So when there is no answer coming, and when you have weak faith, we have so many examples in the Bible, those who had weak faith. King Saul was one of them. Mary and Martha, when Lazarus died, they had also little faith at the death of their brother. Elijah also had very little faith somewhere. He's an excellent example of a spiritual leader who felt the same sting. When he realized that God was not talking, God was so silent. Let's just try to ana uh, analyze um, Elijah's experience. What challenged his face? What was the remedy? What challenged Elijah's face and what was the remedy? And my brothers and sisters, those watching online around the globe, the best remedy for weak faith is to always assume that God is close. When you assume that God is close, even if he's not talking to you, that will help you to keep your faith. And that is why we read 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9. You can read up to 18. And you'll find so many things over there. What led up to this point of Elijah having a weak faith? We find Elijah telling Ahab that there will be no rain unless he says so as a, as a penalty for Israel's idolatry. There were seven gods, so he told him there will be no rain. God tells Elijah to hide for a while. Because when he said that it was it also affected him. There was no rain also for him. If there was no rain, that means there's no food, and so you need to hide. He was fed by ravens morning, afternoon, and evening. And then when the, the, uh, uh, he was sitting uh, near a brook and the brook got finished. The Lord told him to go to a widow. And then when he went to this uh, widow, he multiplied the food for the widow, uh, widow and raised up uh, the son to life. Elijah was on full vacation. 
in that place. Elijah comes back and blames the drought on Ahab to his face. When they met, he said, it is you. And then when he told me that it is you, he challenged Ahab that he should bring his, uh, his priest and then to Mount Carmel for them to be able to see the one who has God with him, whether him and his uh, priest or him as a, a, a God prophet. And so when they came, in a nutshell, Ahab prophets could not do anything. And so after the prayers of, um, of Elijah and the Lord de descended down and the fire came to consume the, the sacrifice, all these prophets were killed by Elijah. And then Elijah told Ahab, have you seen that a small cloud that is coming? If you don't run very fast, the rain will catch you. Because it has, rained, uh, it has not rained for about three and a half years. And so, Elijah even, the Lord's Spirit came into him and he ran before Ahab's chariot to Jezreel. These acts require towering faith. He did all this. Elijah did all this because he had faith in God. But something happened. Apart from all, aside all this, we find him running out of fear in search of God. When Jezebel heard that he had killed all the prophets, he made him to know that the following day he is also going to be like one of the prophets. And Elijah lost faith that God can intervene. Actually, what I saw is that he did not lose faith in God's existence or his good character since he ran to the mount of God. He ran to the mount of God. That means there was little faith. His faith was weak. He, he did lose faith that God would intervene in his situation. That is the, 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 faith, the faith that he lost. And that is our problem. Most of the time we also lose faith in whatever. When something is happening to us, we, we want to go on our own way. We don't want God to come in to help us. And that is what happened to Elijah. God had not abandoned Elijah. When you read uh, 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 1 Kings 19, 3-8, it will tell you all those. Elijah is running to Mount Horeb in search of God. God travels with him to sustain him and make sure he gets there. The Lord made him to get to Mount Horeb. This is a beautiful message for you and I. God is close even when we make mistakes, when we lose our faith, God is there. Elijah lost his faith, but God was there with him. Why did Elijah lose faith? First Kings 19, 1 and 2, Elijah caught, he was caught off guard. An unexpected event shook his faith. He begins measuring God's success by the devil's activity. When the lady said he was going to kill him, it was uh, the, the devil that was uh, just uh, uh, using that lady. He concentrated on how the devil has succeeded, not how God has succeeded. And that is what we are. Sometimes we, we, we concentrate on what the devil does to us more than what God can do and he has been doing and will do for us. Secondly, he allowed the problem to entirely eclipse his success. All the successes that he, he, he got when they went to that mountain and he, he was able to conjure the Lord to come and burn the offering with fire from heaven. And then he was able to kill all those prophets. He allowed the problem 
to engulf the whole success that he had. He forgot that Israel had repented of all their offenses he named. Israel, the people of Israel, had repented, but with him he was afraid. He had weak faith and he was running away from Jezebel. The same happens and pulls us down. We get shaken by unexpected events, which cause us to measure God's success by acts of Satan. And that is why we have to uh, be careful. What are the remedies? Actually, before that one, this can lead us to see our problems, not our successes. When we allow the devil to come in and then uh, we had weak faith, we see problems. Not the successes that we have already had. There are three remedies, three steps God gave to Elijah to strengthen his faith. One, the first rep response was the still small voice. When you read 1 Kings 19, verse 9 going, you see that the Lord came through fire, came through earthquake, came through strong winds, but the Lord was not there. You can see it between 11, uh, verse 11 and verse 13. But the Lord came in a still small voice and asked Elijah, What do you want here? What are you doing over here? Get back. Then he gave him instructions to go and um, or, uh, to make some, some people kings over Syria and uh, over Israel. And then get Elisha also to be part of him. So the second is second response is go back to work. So when he found the still small voice talking, it also told him to go back to work. When you check verse uh, uh, First Kings nineteen fifteen to seventeen, you will find that over there. Elijah will not have another victory if he sits and complain and so let us not sit and complain if we find God to be silent and our faith is weak keep to the task God has given to you the third thing that we need to do verse 18 when you go there you are wrong about your failure sometimes we are very wrong about our failure remember your victories in God and when you remember your victories in God it will strengthen your faith to be able to move forward and do God's work. There are steps that build faith. What are, uh, are these steps? I've taken three of them. Number one, assume God is close to you. If you assume that God is close to you, your faith will be built up. Number two, keep to the task God has given to you. If God has given you some task to do, keep to it and the Lord will bless you. He will push you forward and your faith will also be strengthened. The third one, remember your victories in God. God has um, accomplished a lot of victories in you. So all these accomplishments, if you don't remember them, the devil will make you lose your faith. This is a challenge to each one of us with that thought. There is a story that I want to talk about a hitchhiker. He's called Roger Smith. Roger Smith was discharged from the military and eager to reach home. The only means that he could reach home was to hitchhike. Hitchhike means when you stand and a car is coming, you stop him. When the person stops you, you, you ask uh, for him to take you to a certain place. He saw a brand new Mercedes Benz. To his amazement, the man stopped and then he was picked. The two men had a nice discussion as they journeyed. Since the rich man was passing through his home village, where he was going, the rich man was passing through there. Rogers felt he should witness to this rich man, but was afraid. You see, this is a weak, a weak faith. He was afraid. But finally he mustered courage and presented the Lord Jesus to this man. The rich man accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He gave Rogers his business card. Five years later, Rogers found this business uh, 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 man's card and tried to reach him. He tried to call. But when he called, it was his wife who received the call. Since the rich man had died after dropping Rogers and had a head-on collusion five kilometers from Rogers' home village. So after five years, he realized that this man had a, head, a headlong collusion when he put him in his house. And then the most interesting thing in this is that the lady, Mrs. Hanover, who had earlier been praying for the husband to accept Jesus Christ as his personal savior, is the one who answered Rogers. So when Rogers called, it was that man who did not want to go to church at all, and the wife had prayed and had given up. When he died, the wife gave up because God was so silent. But the lady did not know that God had answered her prayer for the husband's salvation just in time. It took her five years to find out from Rogers that her husband accepted Jesus Christ before he died. Weak faith, let us have good faith. Let us have strong faith so that the Lord will use us mightily to bring so many souls into his kingdom. What are the lessons that we can learn from here? We can always assume that God is close. Let us always assume that God is close by. Let us assume that God is always at work, even when he is silent. We should always have faith that our Lord never leaves us in time of trouble. Even if he's, if he's so quiet, he's still close by. And he's close to us. And so let us have that faith that God is close to us. Remember, we talk about Joseph, Daniel, and his friends. We talk about so many people, Hannah. We talk about the thief of, uh, uh, on the cross. All these, within no time, the Lord came closer to them. And they were able to. So let us learn from all these. Even a thief who was hanging on the cross, who was, who was uh, about to die because of his sins. He told Jesus, remember me. When you get into your kingdom and the Lord said that today you will be with me in paradise. What is your problem the Lord cannot solve? Our Lord is so close to us. But without a sense of belief, we might think he has left us to suffer in the wilderness of sin. Let us have that belief. Let us have that faith. So that the Lord will also always be with us. Let us come boldly before his presence for he's a loving god who does not want us to suffer he does not want us to feel uh, lonely and perish the lord does not want that one so as you as you do your work diligently wherever that you are whether you are a student whether you are a businessman whether you are a lecturer whether you are a government worker whether you are in the, in the government, wherever that you are, feel that the Lord is so close to you. Don't have faith that is so weak. Because if you have faith that is so weak, the devil will take control of you. And when the devil takes control of you, you will not be able to stand firm. As you do your work, have it in mind that the Lord is close even when we think he is silent. I want to appeal to you to give yourself to Jesus Christ because we are almost home. We are going home. And if you build our faith, we will be able to stand. Give yourself to Jesus Christ. Don't wait until last minute when you are sick. It's when you want to give yourself to Jesus Christ. God says, give yourself to him now. When you are strong, and if you give yourself to him, one day when the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, all of us who are living will be caught up in heaven, and so shall we be with the Lord. 
So let us this build strong faith in us for us to stand in and wait for our soon coming of our soon, the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for what you have given to us today. We have a weak faith when we think that we are silent, but we are always close by and you do the right thing for us at the right time. So help us to build our faith and believe in you and put our trust in you so that one day when you appear in the class of heaven, we shall say when we have faith in Jesus, we have been able to stand amidst all the turbulences of problems that we go through and you will take us home. Thank you and thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord be with you.